Bradford, in the north of England, a city that blossomed in a cloud of coal dust during the 19th century. It once housed nearly 50 mines and was the wool capital of the world. But the age of tighter souls is long gone now, the mills mostly silent. Its glory days over, the industrial revolution simply a history lesson and the riots a modern nadir. But more recently, there have been signs that this is a city on the rise. It's a UNESCO city of film, it will be a UK city of culture, and tucked away in the back streets, like a vibrant manga comic hidden in an old newspaper, is a little slice of Tokyo. This is MZR Road Sports. This is a car I've been looking forward to driving for quite some time. It's by MZR Road Sports, and it's their Evolution model of the resto mod that they do, based on the Datsun 240Z, sometimes known as a Nissan Fairlady Z. Now, some of you might be thinking that's a fairly obvious statement. It's clearly a 240Z. It's a very recognizable shape. But if you think that, you're most likely in the United States of America, because this is quite an unusual car to pick as a resto mod in the UK. You see, of the 165-ish thousand of these that were originally made, almost 150,000 ended up in the United States, and fewer than 2,000 made it to the UK. The S30 Generation 240Z is a fascinating car, Launched in 1969, it was the brainchild of Yutaka Katayama, or Mr. K, and it kicked off the now beloved Z car franchise. It is, I think you'll agree, a pretty fabulous looking little car. It has great proportions to it. It's from an era, so it was designed in the late 60s and then built in the early 70s, and it's from that era when Japanese cars took, um, how should we put this, a lot of inspiration from other manufacturers, particularly European ones. I've seen people say that they can see hints of maybe Jaguar E-Type, even Ferrari 275 GTB in this. And this certainly has a soundtrack to warrant those comparisons. What a sound! Just as the looks of this car remind you of other things, this is almost like, it's like one of those film scores that keeps just repeating, giving you hints of the main refrain in it. So as you accelerate, you get sort of noises that think, oh, is that, is that a bit of BMW S54 from the E46 M3? Then there's perhaps some of the smoothness in there of Jaguar's XK engine. And then right up the top, I think with the throttle wide open, there are even hints of Ferrari Colombo V12, that rasping sound. <laughs> Under the bonnet is a 3.2 litre version of the venerable L series straight six. Originally in its 2.4 litre form in the US, it had about 150 brake horsepower, and in this, it has almost double that. And because this Evolution model from MZR Road Sports has a full carbon body, it weighs, well, probably under 1,100 kilos dripping wet, it also has the performance to match the soundtrack. The exact figures, in case you're wondering, are 275 brake horsepower and 248 pounds foot of torque, pushing along just 1,079 kilos via a modern LSD between the 17-inch rear wheels. Now, you're probably waiting for the exorbitant punchline to all this, where I tell you that it costs a million pounds, but it doesn't. 
Even this particular car, Evolution Build 001, the Caraba Commission, the most lavish example to date, isn't even a quarter of that. Expensive, but not exorbitant, particularly once you've seen the work that goes in. So I think it's time to have a chat with the co-owner and co-founder of MZR. This is Rahel Tarek, Bradford born and bred, and a nicer, more friendly chap you couldn't wish to meet. MZR. Presumably you're the R and the R, yes. ZR. And yeah. I can guess what the, the Z is for. Yeah. <laughs> and the M. So what's the M? Martin, uh, my other partner, uh, who is in a separate workshop uh, where all the fabrication and like the carbon body grafting and anything that's to do with metal um, gets done. How did you meet him? Um, I'll cut a long story short, but he was one of the only guys at pre-MZR as just a 240Z owner and enthusiast. Um, I imported a car from California. I really wanted to do a you know ground up restoration, uh, but with a few of my own ideas and I couldn't find anybody in the UK who could really fit the bill. And that's how we kind of got together. He came on his trailer, picked up the car, and that particular car we went through so many scenarios and you know different ideas and stuff. And that's when I really realised what kind of person he was. Yeah. You know how genuine and honest and uh, you know the integrity and the sincerity, which is what you need in in this industry. And paramount is his, is his expertise and his you know experience and and skill. And there is a huge amount of engineering in an MZR creation. Each one starts with a car like this, imported from a dry state in the US to ensure the best starting point possible. Nonetheless, it's then taken back to bare metal, and whether you go for an entry-level steel-bodied car with a 2.8-litre engine, or one of the subtly more muscly carbon-bodied evolutions, the amount of work is incredible. The custom brakes, custom central exhaust system, custom adjustable suspension, custom seats with custom upholstery, prop shaft, drive shafts, beautiful carbon cross brace between the rear turrets, the list goes on. I particularly love the wheels, which are a modern interpretation of the classic Watanabe design, themselves inspired by mini lights. And did I mention the paint? How long would you spend on like, yes, these panels you, you, you to get can them see, kind of... I mean, uh, this is quite a good um, sort of layout here. You can see that the black, all these are, the, all these are evolutions, so they're all carbon. Um, carbon composite panels, the wings and the and the, the bonnets and the hatches that you can see and the door skins. Um, so this one has already been fully prepped once it's painted, which is flattened down hand, hand and machine and uh, and then polished. And you, you're looking a minimum of a day, day and a half per panel. Uh, yeah, so you can imagine the multiplication there of how many panels you've got on the car and the shell is about a week. Uh, the actual body shell is, is about a week of uh, flattening and polishing, but you can't get that without the effort <laughs> and the hours. Curiously, in the late 1990s, you could actually walk into a Nissan dealer in the USA and buy an official new restoration of a 240Z, known as a Vintage Z. Fewer than 40 of the planned 200 were produced in the end, which it seems is sort of indicative of the whole Z restoration scene. It's not easy. And with only about eight people beavering away in the workshops, MZR certainly isn't about to flood the market. I think it's all about getting the quality of people rather than the quantity. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, we are, I wouldn't say we're limited, but we, we're happy with the numbers that we can build per year at this point, you know, with the premises that we've got. And um, like I said, the, the quality control is a lot easier to manage when, you, when you're working in, in that kind of numbers. All this talk of quality and rarity, plus the sight of immaculate engine bays, yes, there's an RB engined car in the works, makes these creations sound almost too good to take out of the garage. Almost. A couple of things struck me as soon as I got into this car. One was, well, just how easy it was to drive, how natural all the controls felt. The weightings from the pedals, the clutch is nice and easy to drive, the gear shift, nice and positive, no fuzziness around it at all. It's from, appropriately enough, a Nissan 370Z. I love this gear lever too. It reminds me a bit of the old, the original 
joystick from an Atari, the CX40, just because of this sort of gate around here, really. The pedals are perfectly placed. I would perhaps just like a rest for my left foot, but the seating position is wonderful because I'm tall and the rim does just cut through those dials, but I love them down the end of those tunnels there. The whole interior, although it's done to MZR's specifications, just enhancing the original, there's all sorts of, I suppose, hints as with the exterior this time, perhaps with the Lamborghini Miura in here. It's a wonderfully sculptural interior and it's, it's just a really comfy place to be. And although this is a, a lovely narrow little car that feels easy to thread down lanes like this between the dry stone walls, it actually feels really roomy in here. There's the character of a bit of a GT car about this. And in fact, I think some of the, the likenesses perhaps with a Jaguar e type come for me, perhaps not, not, not so much from the styling. I mean, obviously you've got a, a straight six up front and rear wheel drive, so it has the overall sort of dimensions and look of a car like that but it's more in the way that it drives because unlike say an alcoholics or that mst escort this you do have just that bit of pouring the nose into the corner first before you get back on the throttle it's that sort of balance that e-type balance that you get from this there is quite a grown-up feel to the evolution and you could definitely imagine doing a decently long road trip in it things like the heated front and rear screens and the modern wipers, which certainly had a workout at points while I was in Yorkshire, make it seem more usable too. I like the fact that the half cage has been PPF'd where the seat belt might catch it, and there is obviously decent luggage space between those distinctive turrets designed to house the Chapman struts. If I'm being picky, and why not, then perhaps there is one too many shades of silver in the interior, from the original low down door handles through the nicely vintage looking radio made by a local company to the modern switchgear for the HVAC, which was chosen because it apes the dials above. Dynamically, the only real adjustment I'd make is to soften the ride and let the car breathe with the road a little more. The suspension on this, well, they've got the adjustable dampers set to about 14 out of their 24 clicks, and I think I'd probably just soften it off slightly. It feels like it's perhaps set up more for smoother European roads. That engine, it's so smooth, it's really quite a grown-up engine and it's a great advertisement for how smooth a straight six is, how well balanced they are. What a noise! <laughs> this is glorious! As darkness fell at the end of the day, we returned to the workshop. This place where dats and dreams come true. It's a great global story. A Japanese car, beloved by the USA, now having a whole new lease of life bestowed upon it by a company in Bradford. <laughs>